This story begins with a request for help. The girl who was sitting with her hands tied and bleeding asked for help, calling Alto to her. There was a burning house behind her and in front of the young man who called to the girl. The guy who was not far from her tried to run to her, but realized that his body was motionless and that he could not move, trying to move himself from his place. He asked someone to help him because turning to Hannah, he understood that they could not lose. At that moment, someone above them said that it was already useless. It seemed that the young man could not even scream and it was all because of life. Life is an immutable law of fortune, such as the will of God. The hero had to delve into it because he was born with too weak a life and therefore can only silently watch without doing anything. At that moment, someone who was talking to our hero was going to attack the girl so that she was right in front of him. The young man, looking at this whole situation, asked himself that this someone stop and he also begged himself to stop when this someone started attacking Hannah, who also could not move. The next moment Hannah was startled, and our hero screamed with tears in his eyes, looking at it. Fifteen years ago, a young man lost his beloved. He was looking for a way to revive Hannah by reading many books. He seriously scoured the world to find a way to revive her. There were rumors that it was necessary to challenge the dragon in the dungeon. But the young man challenging the dragon did not know that the dragon was level 99 and yet he was looking for ways. He would be able to find it if he didn't turn 55. Being already old and standing in front of his opponent, our hero thought that victory was really impossible. Even at level 99 with his experience, how could he defeat the dragon? But now he will not return. He thought to himself, at least to his loved ones. The hero thought, bleeding and remembering Hannah, thinking that she would believe him because he tried, but he was still alone. At that moment, when his strength left him, with tears in his eyes, he remembered Hannah because there was not a minute when he did not think about her, remembering the happy moments that connected them and he apologized that he could not give her anything, lying in front of the altar on which there was medicine. He thought that he could try and try again. In another place, there was beautiful weather and an armchair that stood under a tree on which there was something and addressed our hero, spoke of words of gratitude, asking about how his life had gone. Because the hero was in the paradise of fortune and the young man, looking at the creature in front of him, understood that it turned out that he died. The creature explained that the person who got here was worthy of the tears of God. Enough time passed and thought about what it was about him. A certain vessel revolved around our hero. The young man tried to understand what it was, where it was before him. The creature that was sitting on the chair said that the young man was given the magic of resurrection. He could live his life anew. Hearing that he could live his life anew. The young man was very surprised the next moment the creature said that he could send him on vacation. If you can call it that, there was a beautiful field behind the creature from flowers and meadows, because it seemed to the creature that the soul of the young man was already worn out. Our hero interrupted the creature and said that it was not so. He wanted to live his life again. The hero answered, clearly and loudly in front of the creature. If so, the creature answered, then he will change the fate of the young man. But there is one condition. The term is 20 years and there is only one chance. The power of fate is incredibly powerful and his life runs out before he gets over it and asked this creature if the young man still wanted to start from the beginning. Our hero, remembering his Hannah, thought that of course he wanted this. The young man wanted to save the girl and then the creature said that it was wonderful, so he offered to hear the young man's desire. The next moment it moved into our hero and then said that everything starts over, he will remember the rest himself. No there is no other choice but to endure making efforts to fulfill the desire and offered to challenge his fate. So, our hero, opening his eyes and looking at the two people in front of him, found himself back in the body of a baby, his parents were in front of him, and so his second life began. Then someone called him, addressing Alto, and it was his parents who were happy to welcome their baby and asked him to wake up, wishing the boy good morning and saying that it was nice outside and the sun was shining, so you could go for a walk. Looking at your parents Alto understood that he was back a baby. Then, holding out his hands to his parents, he said yes, and the parents in love looked at their son, wanting to hug him, to which the father stretched out his arms to the child. And the mother took him in her arms and said that they had decided with the father that she would wake the baby. Then the father said that he would put him to bed and a happy mother she said that she really wanted to hug her son. She was overwhelmed with feelings, calling the young boy a cutie. He only uttered inarticulate sounds and thought to himself that everything was fine. He could not say a word to her. The neck was not fully developed yet. Looking at his mother, the son thought that she had long hair when he was born, and dad apparently hadn't grown a beard yet and thought that it was wonderful because he was reborn. The next moment the parents came up with their son to the window and he was looking at the street thinking about that new life and this time there was not a second to lose. Lying in his crib, our hero thought that he could not even suspect that the child's body was so uncomfortable, so underdeveloped. First of all he would like to walk, the boy thought, lying in his cradle. At this moment his mother was cutting food next to him and humming something to herself. The next moment, our hero thought to himself that at least he could turn over and then a window of the system appeared in front of him when the boy pulled his hand to the side of the crib. 
but did not understand at all what it was in front of him. The system window showed the first level and the data of our hero. His name is Alto, his first life, his profession is an operator and his talent is a creator. Then mom came up to her son, asked what he had there. Then our hero pointed at the screen and said unintelligible sounds. The girl did not notice what our hero was pointing at and thought that she probably needed to change diapers. Then the kid guessed that it looked like mom did not see this window. At that moment the system screen showed muscle strength, 1. Physical strength, 1. Our hero thought that maybe these were the statuses of abilities. He could assess the standard of living. He had never heard in the church that it was possible to convert an ability into a numerical equivalent. Maybe then everything happened and remembering his meeting with a certain being in paradise. Alto said that he would allow him to choose his special teju and after hearing this, the young man asked the creature again, to which he said that it was given to people with a natural gift. Geniuses, wars, magicians, technique or creator, it seems the young man was a genius something asked him if he wanted to leave it, to which the young man replied that he did not want the past, because he wanted to be a creator. There are only five natural gifts in the world, but he had never heard of the gift of the creator, he had to see what he could do. Then clicking on the system window. The baby saw that the gift of the creator was unique and he saw the whole situation. If he could learn everything, he would raise the level and thought that it was great. But then I saw that so far she had the worst rating equal to 1. So I'll have to try. But he doesn't have time for this, our hero thought and tried to get out of his cradle. Looking at this, my mother told my father to look carefully. Because Alto was trying to get up and then my father said that he had never seen babies do this. The boy needed to grow up a little. Our hero thought to himself that he did not have time at all because there were 15 years left before Hannah's death, during which time he had to become stronger than the magician who attacked her. There was not a second to lose. Besides, in a previous life he lost not only Hannah, looking at his mother and father, our hero thought. Mom, looking at her son, asked what happened to Alto, because his face was very sad. At that moment our hero hugged his mother and thought that eight years later he lost his father and mother, remembering how they died. It happened at night when Alto was eight years old. Suddenly, a horde of goblins appeared. For the first time monsters attacked the village. The father defended his son and mother, shouting at the goblins to leave them alone. Our hero, looking at all this, thought that he was enveloped and frightened with tears in his eyes he saw how his father was fighting goblins. And he only had a fear of death. At that moment his mother was running away with him in her arms and then he just clung to his mother, trying to scream he followed his father, but it was too late. The next moment, the mother running away told Alto that everything was fine because mom would help him, but at that moment they were attacked by goblins and the mother screamed that she would save her son. Then throwing the young man away, the goblins took her away, and the mother screamed for her son to run, because she would cope with them. The young man was afraid, all he could do was clench his teeth and run away with tears in his eyes. The mother apologized to her son, because she loved him so much, while our hero was running away in tears from his parents. He couldn't do anything, so he just ran away. But this time in his second life he will save mom and dad. It's time to become stronger, our hero thought, sitting next to his parents in the cradle. Later, Alto grew up and began to read books and his intellectual strength status began to grow. Then the mother, taking away the book, told the young man to give it back. And he did not understand why he had to give the book. The next moment the father, who thought that his lantern was not lit, tried to go look for his son. At this moment the moment his lantern lit up. The status window said that the young man's magical power was at level 3. Passivity, working with magical power, a new restoration of magical power. When he grew up, he already began to jump very fast and run. While the other guys were just watching him, his dexterity status and evasion skill level rose. So it was every time our hero could do something new. The next moment 8 years flew by in an instant. The young man sat near the tree and used the gift and skill, which also increased. When mom came home, she told Alto that she congratulated him on his 8th birthday. She was very happy and hugged her son, to which he understood that his mother would crush him if she hugged him so much. His father said that the handsome guy was all in him, and that they would immediately begin training the young man and his mother said that it was a good idea. Mom congratulated her son, because in the evening he goes to church, to which our hero agreed. Everyone who turns 8 years old is given special bracelets. This is a kind of identity card and our hero also turned 8 years old. The priest said and asked to hold out his hands to Alta, to which the young man standing in the church stretched out his hand and the priest gave a magic bracelet proving the identity of the young man. It is better to go to the big city with him, he said and asked be careful not to lose it. After receiving our bracelet, the hero thought that finally, and that the goblins would arrive in the village in a few hours, he was already crying. He had to bring himself to his senses. Alto thought, it was time, remembering the past, our hero thought, because he would save this village. Leaving the church and coming to the forest, the young man wanted to open the skill board to see how much he had advanced. This was his status. 
The young man thought that it was probably necessary to reach 15 levels. It was necessary to increase the power and magic of 32 levels in total, and Alto already knew how to use all the skills accumulated over 8 years. The only skill that he did not understand was the ability to create various functional objects. And our hero thought to himself that he had not activated this ability before, because he did not have this skill and then he thought that it would not hurt in battle. So he decided to activate this skill, this time the moment he realized that the goblins were already here. The goblins were already in the forest and our hero, noticing them, hid behind a tree, thinking that they had come and there were three goblins in total. Most likely they were scouts. Our hero thought that he had to be calm, in the past he defeated many monsters. Then the goblins noticed our hero who was sticking right out from behind a tree and ran straight to him. The young man thought that now would be the first fight in his second life. It was time to show what he had learned and therefore concentrating magic. He thought that he trained every day and would not regret. This time he was the only one who could save the village, so our hero launched an attack on goblins using flames. After defeating one goblin, the young man thought that he had succeeded and that it was not bad, but not enough. The next moment he was fighting another goblin while another attacked him from behind and dodging him. Our hero realized that he should not have made mistakes. So after killing all three goblins, he thought about that it was necessary to strengthen the attacks and it was lucky that I did not meet any monsters yet. At the moment when our hero dealt with the goblins, the system showed that the level had been raised. Our hero thought that it was cool. He was able to defeat them and also increase the level, raising the level. And the young man was already drunk, thinking that his head was spinning, but then he saw a goblin running at him with a sword. The goblin was able to injure the young man. Then our hero thought that it really was already a new wave of goblins. Dealing with the next one, he saw that there was a whole horde behind him and he was caught off guard. There were a lot of goblins, but without the arm that was wounded, he would not be able to fight and thought about that nothing had changed at that time. No matter how hard he fought, he would not be able to change his fate, our hero thought, remembering his beloved. Then the young man thought that he would not give up and using magic he thought that he should have tried harder. At that moment the magic power reached level 50 and the skills that were obtained, the Grave Reaper. When the young man saw the system window where the level increase was written, he thought that he had acquired the crafting skill and the magic power would appear when the level increased. That's why he couldn't use it, our hero thought. At that moment there was a horde of goblins behind him, our hero thought to himself. Did they want to attack at him, because they saw only his weaknesses, but not his fighting skills, and what would they do to him, our hero thought. The next moment, one of the goblins began to attack the young man, who, dodging his sword, thought that it was close to being wounded and using his magic, or rather a fireball. Our hero attacked the goblins and realized that it was harder with a cut hand, and this nastiness only became more. This time at that moment, a large number of goblins attacked our hero and he believed that this time there were eight. With such strength he would be able to fight them off, so the young man tried to believe in his strength. Grave Grave skill was used the next moment using magic and then he was able to deal with the goblins who were falling right into the gorge, realizing that Alto had done it. Did the young man think that he could? It was a grave, it was a crafting skill, looking at his hands. Our hero thought and was glad that he did this, remembering his fate and thought that it would change, because Alto saved the village. At that moment the system showed him a level increase and it was a lot of increases, probably because he defeated the goblins, our hero thought. Once the level has risen, it means that he has heard that if there is an opportunity to go a step higher, then the level increases. This is an increasing pain, the young man thought, losing consciousness. Then I opened my eyes. The young man realized that he was cold and something was flying near his face. He thought, at that moment he saw a certain creature and looking at him jumping away. He thought what it was. There was some beautiful slime in front of him and then the slime showed him its head. The young man saw some kind of liquid and asked if he should have drunk it, drinking what was in the slime's head. Alto thought about how good it was for him. The slime was jumping in front of him at that moment and then our hero thought about what it was, looking at the slime that was right in front of him. Looking at this something, the young man thought that the slime did not look like a dangerous monster and that it was friendly enough. At that moment the slime jumped straight to our hero and climbed up to his face, to which he did not understand what she wanted and that touching the slime was very ticklish. The next moment, our hero was already looking at the village where he was born, sitting on a mountain and thinking that a pretty, small place surrounded by nature. At that moment the slime also looked ahead and showed something, but our hero said that he would not return here. There is a person he should there was a chance to save him, but he was still weak and it was possible that it was all useless. About a mile from here there is the city of Kinetocris, one of the best underground cities. The goal is to capture the upper floors, raise the level there as much as possible, our hero thought. Then the guy remembered his beloved and thought about how to level up. Remember what the city looked like and what obstacles and battles awaited him, because only seven years remained until that day. The young man thought. At that moment the slime was crawling over our hero and then getting up. He thought that he was apologizing to father and mother and asked to be excused for his sudden departure. 
The young man wrote a letter where he said that he had a list of tasks that, no matter what, he had to complete. The young man thought that this was the end, but it was necessary to fix everything and so really needed and thanked his parents for surrounding him with love. He was glad that he grew up with them, remembering his father and mother. Eight years had passed and he was happy. The young man thought with tears in his eyes and that then it was necessary to hit the road. After leaving his parents' house, the slime followed him and our hero could not understand if she was watching him, because it was dangerous and said that she would go alone. It was difficult to defend herself from monsters. But then the slime began to applaud her limbs. The young man thought that since she was so worried, she could stay by his side, agreeing with the slime. The next moment, the young man was thinking about what to call this slime. Jumping from the slime she was trying to tell our hero something and he thought that she was telling him something. Time passed and one month later, our hero fought with a wolf that was strong enough and after defeating him, he thought that he needed to have lunch. At that moment the slime was next to him and dragged something on himself and realized that these were wounds from a new wolf. The young man thought and thanked the slime. At that moment she put one from magic stones directly into our hero's bag and having magic stones, there was no need to worry about expenses, he thought. Then the slime put down a stone and ran and shouted something in its own language. The young man saw where the slime was moving and thought that he had really found them a place to sleep. The next moment the young man looked out from behind the mountain, and the slime was sitting on him and looking at the overnight stay the young man thought that it was just right it was a cave and he thought that he would rest here today, because he was supposed to go to Kinetogris tomorrow. After roasting a barbecue on the campfire, he thought that there was a low-rank monster here and it was easy to find food even without the fight he was used to. Finally his body began to look like itself in a previous life, fast-growing and unsurpassed. The next moment, a system window appeared in front of our hero, showing his level 32 and his characteristics, which increased each time. The young man was thinking that it was possible to raise the level more effectively while in the dungeon in order to become stronger. At that moment our hero was sitting on a stone and holding another stone in his hand. And while eating a kebab, he saw that the slime that had climbed up to him was also starting to eat a kebab. Looking at the slime that was on his hands, the young man asked him to try to eat rice and asked if he would really eat everything. Smiling, our hero looked at her and thought that he would find something that inspires and collect magic stones. He was very glad that he met the slime. Then our hero asked, was he really a predator and it was a small shock for the young man. At that moment someone was watching the hero from behind the mountain. When our hero felt that someone was watching him, he threw a stick from a barbecue directly towards the mountain, where someone was hiding, and then he thought that someone was quickly dodging. The next moment the young man realized that it was moving so fast that he could not keep track of it, and then what was moving fast hurt our hero and he thought that if a bunch of attacks fell at such a speed, he would not survive. Looking in front of him, the young man saw a demon, not a man, a thief who came for magic stones. He thought, at that moment this someone fell right in front of our hero and then taking the kebabs in his hand which were our heroes. A girl in the guise of a half-human half-animal stood in front of him, looking at her our hero completely I didn't expect this. The young man saw in front of him a girl who was eating his barbecue and asked if she was a monster, to which the girl replied that she was a magica and a traveler and asked the young man who he was, to which our hero introduced himself saying that his name was Alto. The young man thought to himself that she did not look like at the monster and that the girl looked friendly. The girl looked at him. The guy said that she had very cute ears and then she reported that she was from the squirrel tribe, had the young man heard about this, but then she said that she didn't care. Our hero just looked at her questioningly and the next moment the girl was already disappearing from the his field of vision was next to the campfire where our hero's food was being fried. The next moment, she asked if the young man didn't mind if she finished it, to which our hero did not understand why she was doing this and where she was. He never heard please. At that moment the slime was trying to get the shish kebab from the girl's hands, which she took. The next moment in the morning, when our hero woke up, the girl was following him, and the slime was already sitting on her shoulder. Then our hero asked why the girl was following him, to which she told Alto that he was still a child. She needed to go to the cinema, so she follows him, to which our hero asked Magiku if she wasn't still a child herself. The girl said that if you look like an adult, you still remain a child, to which our hero was asked to think that he was already an adult, even though he was going to go alone. But then it suddenly dawned on him and turning to Magica, Alto said that time would pass faster this way and it was necessary to go I smile at the girl, the young man said, to which she agreed. The next moment, the young man pointed in front of him, said that he had seen him and it was a movie screen. The landscape of the city appeared in front of the guys, behind a large wall and approaching the city. Passing through the gate they were greeted by residents. First a girl came across who said that everything was here for them, low taxes and no criminal record and offered they have to go into the city. Since ancient times, Kinetogris has meant chaos. A wide variety of races. It's all about the dungeon towering in the center. People, fascinated by the dungeon, gather in this city one by one. At that moment, 
As the heroes entered the city, Magica was very scared. The young man asked what happened, to which she said that she was going through and seeing so many people for the first time. Turning to Magica, the young man said that he himself was from the village, and to which the girl replied that she lived on the street. The young man said that he was nervous when he arrived for the first time, to which Magica was very surprised and told Alto that he had previously said that he had not been here, to which Alto said that he was here with his parents and then remembered that he was like 10 years old and it felt like the city was alive. Almost nothing has changed, looking around, our hero thought. Alto thought to himself, I wonder if something will happen in the next two years, because we had to be careful and then the girl asked where he was going now. Our hero said that he needed to join the Adventurer's Guild, needed money to live here and asked if Magica was going with him, to which the girl said that she would certainly go with him. Coming to the guild, the young man said that he wanted to exchange magic stones, to which I turned to him. The man said that the guy was at the wrong address. Our hero was very surprised and then the man standing behind the counter said that the guy should leave, because this place was not for children. Then our hero took his bag and shook it out all the stones that he only had were on the table. And the man who had previously wanted to drive him away was very surprised that the young man showed and asked where he had so many stones from. Our hero said that he got them on the hunt. Alto defeated this girl who was standing next to him, but does not know how to sell magic stones. Pointing to Magica, Alto said, to which the man looked at the girl in surprise and she wanted to say that she had nothing. Our hero asked her shut up. Then, smiling, the guy realized that it was about 1990, telling our hero 2 gold, 29 silver and 85 copper, to which the young man thought there were only 1990 pieces. But he was already so exhausted. It was because he was a child or it was about growth. Putting money in his bag the young man thought and asked, could he have registered as a seeker? The man asked the young man why the child was registering as an adventurer, to which the young man pointed at the girl and said that she was an adult and by the way, he needed to register because he had a big deal. At that moment Magica wanted to say something again, but our hero closed her mouth and asked the man to hurry up because they didn't have time. When leaving the Magica guild, she turned to Alto and told the young man to take her with him to use, asking him what our hero apologized to her, explaining that he did not want to. But at his age it is difficult to explain all this so he just asked for help. And he asked Magica if it wasn't smart to spend time buying magic stones. To which she said that it didn't improve his reputation. Turning to Alto, following him, hearing about reputation. The young man said that he didn't care. No one gets stronger from increasing reputation, he said. And looking at as a young man, Magica was very surprised by his words. Our hero walked ahead of her and said that now that there was money, it was necessary to find a hotel and thank the girl for helping. They could eat together, but if the girl had some business, they could say goodbye here. After hearing this she said that they could go, but not for nothing, either money or they spend time in his room. And when he heard this, the young man told the girl to follow him, while what she was, our hero thought to himself. Evening came, and the young man said that he was very glad that the girl went with him. He thought that she would refuse at first and sitting in the room they talked, to which our hero said that because he looked like a street kid for him, many roads were closed in this hotel the food is delicious, our hero said and thought that the girl would like it too. While they were sitting in their room and our hero was explaining something, Magica looked at him point blank and the young man did not understand what it was and the girl said that there was nothing like that and she would go take a bath. After hearing this, our hero saw the girl take off her raincoat and asked her to undress in the bathroom and not in front of him. At that moment the slime was very I was glad and slept on my bed. Magica thought that she was tired, standing in the bathroom, putting on clothes, because this was the first time with her, and when she got out of the shower, she thought that she would go to bed, and tomorrow morning she would eat her fill. At that moment she saw our young man practicing magic exercises and realized that there was mana in front of her, the man was incapable of such a thing. Then looking at the young man who was sitting on the bed with his eyes closed, she thought about who this alto was, traveling around the world. Magica explored it inside and out all in order to find someone. But a few days ago some guy was lucky to tag along with her, the girl thought, and watching him. She saw that the young man turned out to be strong beyond his years, possessed skills that she had not yet seen, so that she had to get closer to check on him, it looked like he had some kind of secret. Magica recalled everything that our hero said and she was surprised that he spoke and behaved like an adult. Could it be that he was the one she was looking for, the one who could change this world? But, according to the starry prediction, the hero will come to this world in the body of a girl and she thought that it was impossible for Alto to be this hero, looking at the young man she thought. Magica also thought that she had a feeling that the young man would become the key to opening the doors of a new world. This feeling that she experienced. The next moment, our hero was already asleep, tired after his classes, and the girl, looking at him, thought that when the mana disappeared, the young man collapsed like a dead man. Why is he so exhausting himself with training? The girl asked questions. You might think that someone was chasing him, sitting on the roof of the house. Someone was watching them. 
then tried to climb through the open window and Magica was very surprised, thinking that who was here and was it really a thief? His presence was almost not felt. He must have had a very low level. She could drive him away, but she I wanted to see how he would cope in such a situation. So Magica lay and pretended to be asleep. At this moment the thief who made his way into their room was reaching out to our hero and stretching out his hands to the bag. Our hero woke up and wished a good evening to the one who was right in front of him, so pulling out a knife, he tried to attack our hero. The girl jumped up from her bed, shouted to Alto to be careful. At that moment the knife froze right at the throat of the young man and the thief said to the guy didn't move. The next moment, the thief told the young man that he would behave like an adult and then he would not touch him. Magica asked what the thief wanted and our hero too. Did he really want money and how did he know that they were in his bag? The young man asked, to which the thief could not do anything to say and the young man offered to talk to him, attacking the thief, because that thief was none of him and used an air cannon, attacking the one who came to attack them and this someone fell out of the window from the blow of our hero. Magica, looking at the young man, asked Alto if everything was fine, to which our hero said that everything was in perfect order. The girl watching where the enemy fell, thought that it was incredibly complex magic that our hero used in one awkward movement. It could easily kill a person. How many the young man trained to reach such a level at his age? Magica thought, looking at the boy. The next moment she turned to Alto and asked him, but the young man was already sound asleep again and the girl thought that this boy would definitely become famous in many ways. Looking at the thief's knife, which lay near the young man's bed, waking up and going down to the tavern, the guys began to eat. They were brought different dishes and our hero asked if it was delicious here and if Magica liked it. The girl eating everything in front of her said that it was the most delicious thing she had tasted distorting the words because her mouth was full of food and the hero said, so that she can eat and take her time. The next moment, the guys thanked us for the food and Magica thanked our hero, saying that she had eaten to the brim and they left the hotel and then the young man promising to Magica said that in the morning she ate for ten. Then Magica asked what happened next. The young man said that, to tell the truth, he planned to go to the dungeon, but yesterday an uninvited guest came, so he wanted to look somewhere else, holding in his hand a knife that was left by the thief. And then our hero went to the guild, coming and greeting those who were sitting right in front of him again. Two men looked at him, one of whom was the one who sold our hero money and when he saw the boy, he asked if it was really yesterday's kid, to which the young man asked if they were studying magic stones today. The man said that he was talking to the boss and if he had a case. He asked the young man to come later, to which our hero said that how well everything coincided. He would also like to discuss something with their superiors and whether it could be that there was a thief in the guild, our hero said. Then the boss, looking at our hero, Asked what the young man was talking about and asked to tell him in more detail, to which the young man said that some suspicious type had entered their room yesterday. But fortunately they managed to scare him off. But his goal was the money earned from the magic stones sold to the guild. The criminal did not he rummage through the room. He knew exactly where they were lying. Otherwise he would not have guessed to look for them in a child's back. In other words, the robber can only be someone who was in the guild when making the deal. When he finished speaking, our hero looked at his superiors and then the boss said that the probability was really high, then turning to Lion, who was sitting right in front of him, to which the boss said that he was responsible then and asked if there was anyone suspicious, to which Lion replied that he did not even know this, maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't. The boss asked to speak more clearly, our hero just silently watched the situation. Then Lion reported that there was no one suspicious. The young man, pointing to Magica, said that, by the way, she managed to brand the criminal when she dealt with him. The girl was very surprised by what the young man was saying and then our hero reported that if the boss noticed a man with a magic sign on his hand, they asked him to detain him. At that moment Lion lowered his sleeves. At that moment, giving the dagger to the boss, our hero said that the thief had also dropped the dagger. It seemed like a good dagger, but it would be better to hand it over to the gendarmes as evidence. However, he will help them in the search for the thief, the chief said, looking at the dagger in front of him. The next moment, Lion jumped up and asked the boss if the young man could keep this dagger for himself, because there are rules according to which you can take away the things of a defeated opponent. Wasn't it so? It was a pity to give away such a good dagger. The boss agreed with Lion, but then there was a problem. Before he could finish, Lion already approached our hero and gave him the dagger, said that it was great and asked him to take care of this dagger. Because it was. That is, it was probably very expensive and our hero pushed the guy away from himself was unhappy with what was happening. And then the boss asked that the transactions take place calmly. It was necessary to strengthen security and Lion said that he understood everything and asked to rely on him. Then our heroes left and Magica said that that man was a thief, was it worth leaving it like that? To which our hero said that they were already there they warned me, the rest is not their concern. To which the girl said, was his real goal to get a weapon and our hero, looking at Magica, did not understand. Did she figure him out and thought that since they were done with it, the adventures begin. Standing in front of the entrance to the dungeon, our hero spoke, looking at the top, 
from this very dungeon and magica, too, looking up said she couldn't see the top. Alto explained about the Kinetogris Labyrinth, because it is one of the greatest dungeons in the world, and no one knows how vast it was, and who built it and how, so when they entered the portal they found themselves in another place. The young man explained that there is a lower level from the 1st to the 25th floor, you can walk through it relatively calmly, then mostly novice adventurers train. While our hero was talking here, someone's mumbling attracted his attention. The next moment, Two guys who were standing not far from him said that this monster had escaped from the top floor and shouting to the guy that his magic was not enough. So the young man had to run and then a giant rat with a horn on its head ran straight at our hero. Everyone saw him, said that there was a child here, he needed to run away faster. Alto, looking at the enemy in front of him, pronounced the word grave. The next moment the animal fell right into a large hole in the floor, and the young man thought that their affairs were bad. He would not have calculated the strength of the strength. Then he would have overdone it and could have hurt the others. To which Magica, looking down, was surprised how and all the others who didn't understand where that huge hole in the floor came from. Some thought it was an earthquake, but there was no shaking. The young man said that suddenly the floor fell through as if for evil. The hole was deep enough, so he shouted to everyone to be careful and they ran away. Magica said that why didn't he say that it was his doing? Then our hero reported that they would not believe him anyway. It was better to run faster to the upper floors. There was an average level from the 26th floor. They say a real maze begins from here. The next moment Magica was dealing with a bear, and the young man said that it was cool and that she defeated the bear with one blow. Magica, sitting next to the carcass, said that it was nothing special because Alto also fought. The young man, taking out the blade from his belt, thought that it was worth testing it. At that moment the system reported an increase in skill. Dexterity was plus 10. The young man was very glad that the skill was increased because he could not imagine that this dagger was so effective. If there was a skill board, he would immediately be able to see progress and not feel it and that the knife would definitely be useful when choosing equipment. Even with such a good weapon, you can't stop and you had to become stronger by dealing with the bears in front of them, our hero thought. At the middle level, the monsters were also not particularly strong, so when leaving it was better to look for more serious monsters. The upper level was next, our hero reported, and they left the middle level, having dealt with the opponents. Magica was just looking at the bears, who were killed by our hero. Our hero made his way into the cave and a fight began there. The next moment he was fighting demons who were coming straight at him and using a rockfall. Alto decided that he could fight off these demons. Then the demons fell under the stones that our hero could use. Looking at this he exhaled with relief. The guys were on the 50th floor. The upper level starts from here, the young man said, addressing Magica, and that this was a high danger zone where only a small part of high level adventurers are able to fight. With each next floor, the strength of the monsters would increase, so first you had to go up to the level here, our hero said, looking ahead of himself. Magica only looked at Alto. And then, turning to him, asked why the young man was fighting monsters in the usual way. After hearing this, our hero was very surprised. Was there really an unusual way? And if the girl knew a good method, then Alto asked to teach her. Our hero looked at Magica with sparkling eyes, to which she replied that she did not want to say that, but that the monsters that the young man had just defeated were strong enough to cause problems even for high-level adventurers. Magica doesn't like that the boy flunked several of them at once and she couldn't get it out of her head. How did it happen that the young man was so strong, standing in front of our hero? The girl asked. Then the young man decided to ask if she thought it looked strange and Magica said that of course it was so from the outside and asked why our hero was so surprised. The next moment, the young man realized that she was already the second person who could see his real self. Before that no one recognized him except Hannah. In his previous life, even when Alto reached level 99, he had to fight monsters alone, while high-level adventurers gathered followers. No one even looked in his direction, because his life was low. The young man recalled what happened to him and that this was the law of this world. It turns out that there are people who, apart from Hannah, did not obey this law, the young man thought to himself. At this moment Magica was interested in whether the young man in front of her was exactly human. But our hero, smiling, replied that he was 100% definitely human, thought to himself that, although difficult it was hard to believe, because he died and was reborn. Magica, having looked at the young man, repeated his words and asked what he was so happy about, generally looking at the smiling alto. Magica also decided to stop at the version that the young man was just a weirdo. After hearing this, the hero was very indignant why she wanted to call him. So the next moment, the system informed the hero that his level had been raised and then they moved on through the cave. Our hero reported that now he could defeat monsters from the 50th floor and invited the girl to climb up a little more. Our hero thought to himself that if his memory from his previous life did not fail him, there would be a dangerous monster here and at that moment a small ogre appeared in front of them. In a previous life, he had to work hard to take down this ogre, our hero thought, and he was wondering how quickly he could do it now. 
While they stood in front of the ogre and our hero was thinking, Majka said that this ogre couldn't wait to kill. He had a completely different level compared to the monsters they had met before. She said in turning to Alto. The girl informed that she would come to him from the rear. Our hero said that this was not he will, because he will fight alone with this monster. After hearing this, Magica thought that the young man was not himself, because one mistake and the young man was a dead man. Our hero replied that he knew everything, but this was a chance to check how strong he really was. Pulling out his knife and standing up against the ogre, our hero spoke. The next moment he was already attacking and attacking the ogre with his sword and realized that the skin of this monster was thick, as if made of metal. But our hero was still able to injure him. From this the ogre was beside himself with anger and attacked a young man, cutting him on the cheek. The next moment, dodging the blow, the young man thought that this did not mean that there was no effect from the attack. If he continued to dodge and hit the same place, which our hero had been doing all this time, then he would be able to defeat the ogre. But landing after another attack, Magica said that it couldn't just be. But I thought to myself that the young man really defeated this monster so easily. Our hero, drying up, thought to himself that he thought he wouldn't have to strain much. Maybe he was the limit of his current strength. The next moment the slime was carrying him a big diamond and when he saw this, the young man asked if a monster of this rank and stones were much bigger. He was wondering. Already it was time. At that moment he called Magica and asked if she had heard him. And the girl just stood behind the young man and asked what kind of sound they heard. To which our hero, realizing what it was, turning to Magica, said that they had to run away quickly from here. To which the girl said that it was impossible, because if they moved, then they will die. At this moment a huge ogre was reaching out to them, coming straight from the depths of the cave. The green org is a monster wrapped in magical ivy. The ivy itself is a low-level monster, it parasitizes other creatures of a higher level and sucks out power. And then our hero, looking at the ogre right in front of him, thought about what the monster of the 70th floor was doing at 50. Ordinary ogres even begin to appear 10 floors above. Alto was not even completely sure of defeating the small one, the young man thought, and there was a big ogre in front of him. The next moment, our hero, addressing Magica, said that it was necessary to catch the moment and run, putting the slime in the bag and looking at the girl. He thought, but Magica said that it was impossible. She knew that this monster was strong, but that it also had a limit. So activating her gloves she she was ready to go into battle, because she trained hard to become a worthy partner. The hero she was looking for, she had no equal. But when she met the young man, she finally realized that these efforts were not enough. The next moment, the girl rushed at the ogre and thought that it was her duty to win after all, and began to attack the monster. After her attack, Magica looked at the ogre in front of her and realized that there was almost no effect. He only got more angry and started attacking the girl, dodging and running away from the ogre. Magica thought that she was faster than him. The damage from one attack was clearly not enough, so she should have spent several at once, she thought to herself, constantly attacking the ogre faster. The next moment, beating her with ivy, she realized that he had grabbed her and that squeezing her body was very painful for her. At that moment I used an air blade. Our hero was able to free the girl and the ivy fell behind her. To which our hero asked how Magica felt and the girl thanked him, thinking about how pathetic she was, because she had just been saved by a child. The next moment, she looked at the ogre and activated her power again, realizing that it was time to give her all. So using the light of an untouched shadow, she asked to be granted the power of radiance of 1000 celestial bodies. Artifact Star Rain used magic against the ogre, attacking him with all his strength. The next moment, the girl realized that she had used up all the mana for her secret spell. Now she thought the ogre should have died. But the next moment the dust cleared and she saw that the ogre was unharmed and did not understand at all how it could be. At that moment the ogre was lifting his leg right over Magica. Looking at the ogre, Magica thought that although she put all her strength into her blow, but it was not enough. The next moment the ogre fell into the ground, right under him. Our hero tried to save the girl and seeing Alto in front of him, who took her in his arms and ran away with her said that she had to leave the rest to him and I turned to Rue, to my slime, to look after Magica, the slime agreed, and our hero went back into battle, standing in front of the ogre. The young man understood that he had to win. The next moment he rushed straight into the attack and he was no faster than Magica. But since this was the case, he thought. At that moment his stream of thoughts was interrupted by the ogre's attack and Magica, seeing this, tried to scream. The next moment, the young man realized that he could not breathe and used the blow to somehow attack the ogre. Looking at the opponent, the young man thought that Ivy is Ivy, although magical, but still susceptible to fire magic. But even if he burned the vine itself, the Ivy would just continue to regenerate. It was necessary to attack so that the ogre would suffer. Grabbing his sword, the young man went back to attack him and thought about the fact that it would not work to pierce his thick skin directly. So it was necessary to aim right here. Alto thought and attacked the ogre with a fireball right in the back. Plopping to the ground, the young man looked at his attack, 
The next moment his eyes went dark and he fell to the ground. Magica only looked at the ogre in shock, who was amazed and understood that the young man had won. But Alta was just a child and was able to defeat this ogre. These were Magica's last thoughts, before before she fell, opening their eyes. Both of our heroes saw the slime that stood right above them. At that moment the sun was shining and they were on the ground, thinking that how did they end up there, the young man wondered. And looking at the slime he wondered if it was really Rue who took them out. To which he on his own the tongue replied that it was so and hugging the slime, the young man thanked her, saying that he was the most reliable companion in the world. Turning to Magica, Alto said that it would be dangerous to remain unconscious there. It was very good that they were here now. The girl just kept silent and the next moment, apologizing, said that she would be the first to return to the hotel. The young man agreed and said that he would also take a break and would return. Looking at Magica, our hero was very surprised that Magica could really use an artifact. Artifacts are created by God, holy tools that can be counted on their fingers in their world. The artifact used by Magica is called Star Rain. Alto recalled that if his memory from his previous life did not fail him, after seven years the owner of this artifact would die. It was night outside and our hero, sitting in the bathtub, thought that it turns out that Magica possessed the magic of an artifact all this time. The artifact is the hand of justice, a kind of squirrel, a person with these two traits according to the decision of the Vatican. Criminal element number 5 Machia X Ter. She and five other people they declared enemies of God and this has not happened yet, but in the future an order will be given to destroy them. The young man asked to show the skill board and a system appeared in front of our hero, looking at it. The young man thought that most likely the life indicator of Magica was 4. In the dungeon he felt her magical energy surpassing him and an indestructible barrier. She should be incomparably stronger than him. Our hero thought and here she is the difference in the standard of living but even the Vatican will ruin her in 7 years, the young man thought, sinking under the water. He began to understand what kind of weakling he really was against her background. Whether he would really be able to change his fate, our hero thought sadly. At that moment Slime appeared in front of him and our hero, surprised, surfacing from his bath, asked what she was already doing here and just sat down not to say that he also wanted to wash himself. At that moment the Slime answered something in its own language and then our hero, getting out of the bath, began to wash it. This time they got out only thanks to the slime, the young man said, rubbing the rue with a washcloth and that in gratitude the young man would rub the slime to shine, he said, and the slime was very happy about it. While the young man was rubbing the slime, she answered him something in her own language. The young man could not understand whether it was necessary to stop because the heels of the slime were tickling. But he never thought that the slime could have heels. The next moment, the slime standing in front of him even blinded his eyes from that how much it sparkled and the young man asked if he always looked like this when he was clean. Smiling, our hero looked at the whistle and asked if Rue was happy. He just jumped with happiness and said something to the hero. The next moment he blurred like a puddle. Seeing this, the young man asked if it was impossible to wash him and shoved the slime into the water, leaving the mana and bringing the slime into the room. The young man thought that he had scared him. At that moment Magica appeared in front of him, getting up from the sofa. Hello Alto. The girl was saying that she wanted to say something and going outside our hero decided that it would be necessary to talk there, bringing the girl a drink. While he was carrying the drink, he thought that since they returned to the hotel, the girl had not said a word, did something really happen, at that moment, bringing the drink. The young man said that the sunset was beautiful here. They looked at the night sky and Magica said that it was really so. Taking a mug, she sat very sad. And then turning to Alto, she said that she always thought that she would never lose to a magician, she was sure that they were no match, probably training made the girl too arrogant, she said. But now she realized that Magica was weak and she was still very green, so from now on she wanted to devote herself entirely to single training, the girl said. Addressing Alto, Magica reported that living next to the young man would only worsen her weakness, so she wanted a separate room, if she had not gone with him, addressing Alta, she would never have found out about it and thanked him. Next time she would definitely not lose to him. Addressing the young man again the girl said, so at the next meeting she will try to become stronger than the young man. Hearing this, the hero's hands shook and he began to laugh, to which Magica did not understand at all why the young man was laughing. And our hero said that the girl was saying very strange things. The next moment he apologized to her, thinking to ask that it was not about talent. There is only him. No, the most important thing is to try hard. And then clinking mugs. Our hero said that he was not going to lose either and they had to meet again when each of them would become a hundred times stronger. The guys laughed and rejoiced at what they had now. But then they could not even think that no matter how hard they tried, there was still a force in this world capable of destroying them in the blink of an eye. Returning to the hotel, our hero began to pack his things and looking into the bag, he realized that he had collected everything. Taking one last look at the bed where Magica was sleeping, he closed his eyes and leaving the room thought that he had to go and keep his promise, which he gave to the girl. 
Since then, he has lost track of time and plunged headlong into training. First he had to develop the crafting skill, our hero thought, looking at his system and coming to the forest. He thought that this was a great place to train. There are a lot of crystals that can be collected and the forest was also filled with mana. A crafting skill, the young man thought. Therefore, generating mana, the young man began to train by breaking stones into pieces. At this moment he received a skill boost and control over magic. All this time he was training by mining stones. The next moment, the increase reached 20 crafting skills and the blacksmith was open. As the young man thought, crafting gives him not only attacking abilities like the Grave Reaper, but also the ability to create things. The materials obtained in the dungeon were fire, as well as magic for forging, and now he had already knocked out his own weapon. Of course, one could not worry about being chased out of the forge. Holding a sword in front of him, our hero thought, using only the sword during training. He suddenly acquired a new skill. The next moment fighting in a cave with a monster, the young man realized that he was very strong here, but it was too early for him to move to the floor, our hero thought. The next moment, the system reported that the young man had acquired the skill of the art of the blade and that he had surpassed level 40. A new skill was discovered, two-handed style. After seeing this, the young man took out his sword and used any weapon against his opponent. After fighting the enemy, the level was immediately raised in the next moment. To begin with, our hero thought that using the Grave Reaper, Typhoon and other attacks, he, the level of the Grave Reaper rose, combined it with magic, who got the opportunity not only to control the created crack, but also the ability to high murder potential. All this time, our hero's level has been rising, as have his skills. The system reported that the young man's level was 40 and he increased all skills by 30 units. The crafting skill and manipulation was available. After seeing this, the young man was very surprised what it was and then opening the system window. It was reported that part of the mana would be absorbed and the object would move in the desired direction. Looking at this our hero he pointed his hand at the stone and used the word manipulation. The stone moved to the side. Not such a noticeable skill as the Grave Reaper, but the young man thought that this skill would also be useful. He still developed the skill, so every day passed, winter soon came. Coming to the city, the young man walked past the townspeople and they were talking about something. Then our hero involuntarily overheard the conversation and heard something interesting. Two men were standing talking about it and one of them asked if he had heard that recently an eccentric appeared on the upper floors of the dungeon, who brought down a thousand monsters at once. The second man said that he had also heard about him and said that the young man was just a child. For some reason he carried low-level slime everywhere with him at that moment. Our hero passed by them and realized that they were talking about him and when they saw the young man they could not believe themselves. After all, there are so many high-level adventurers hunting on the upper floors and in groups, Looking at them, the young man was silent and thought that his life was beginning to be noticed. Last time, because of the low life expectancy, whatever he did, he was simply not noticed. But perhaps something had changed, although he actually did not allow us to call him an oddball. Our hero thought, looking at strangers. The next moment, the young man, standing in the hotel, wished a good day, said that tomorrow he would go to the dungeon again. So he wanted to vacate the room for two minus three days and the owner of the hotel informed the young man to be careful and asked, by the way, the girl who was next to him, was she okay? The young man, hearing this question, understood that since they had rented separate rooms, he had not seen her and then the owner said that the girl had not returned for several days and this made her worry. After hearing this, our hero squeezed his jacket and thought that it was magica. There was nothing to worry about what, and yet he was uneasy. The next moment, a knight on horseback rode into the city and everyone looking at him thought that the Vatican had called its knight and that it was very cool. Our hero, hearing this, ran away from the hotel. And the owner asked what happened, to which the young man did not answer anything and ran away, thinking to himself about that the future he remembered was at odds with reality. But then he realized that everything was right. What he changed also affected Magica, but why didn't he think about it? Our hero thought and did the Vatican already give orders to destroy Magica? But what if the future in which she was executed would come now? Our hero thought and prayed that Magica was fine. At that moment he was running past a carriage in which someone was sitting, watching our hero from the window and thinking that what a smart boy he was. The next moment, running near the dungeon, the young man prayed that Magica was okay and used the sense of presence, because such a strong person as Magica should have been easy to find in the crowd and he hoped that he was not mistaken. At that moment he saw a girl and shouted so that she could hear him. Turning around, Magica saw Alto and said that they had not seen each other for a long time, asking how the young man was doing, to which Magica saw him and said that he was fine. After all, she was not one of the weak and probably he was worried in vain, to which the young man, after catching his breath, said that everything was fine and Magica asked why he was breathing so hard. After hearing this our hero could not say that he had thoughts about her death and therefore he said that he was here on a run and saw a girl, so he decided to say hello. 
and he pretended that he ran on, then taking off his scarf, he said that it was cold, probably in such clothes as Magica was wearing, and putting the scarf on her, asked the girl to look so that she would not catch a cold. Magica, seeing our hero, thanked him. At that moment something with the sky was watching them and I turned my head up. The guys didn't understand what it was. The young man said that it was some kind of black clot and Magica said that she was somehow uncomfortable with it. Then it looked like this clot was gradually increasing and feeling this aura. Our hero understood that it was bad. So the young man asked Magica to take people away from here. The next moment, this clot began to crack and then our hero, closing his eyes, thought that this could not be, because it was a demon right in front of them. It was a creature controlling high-ranking monsters and why did he show up in the middle of the city, our hero thought. The next moment the demon was destroying houses that were near him, and they said that the demon would not stop attacking until everything around turned to ashes. He would not stop for anything. But at this moment our the hero understood that he could not move, just like that time when everything was on fire. Because of the insurmountable difference in living standards, the whole body would freeze, regardless of his will. The law of this world is inexorable. But the young man tried to strain his limbs and thought that he too had to make his body move, because at this rate the city would be completely destroyed. The next moment Magica put a scarf on the young man and said that everything was fine and that Alto could rely on Magica. Jumping from his seat she was heading straight for the demon to attack it. The next moment, our hero watched carefully, thought that it was an amazing girl. She became many times stronger than before. Now Magica was very strong. The girl at that moment attacking the demon saw that she could injure him. But he used regeneration and the girl understood that he wasn't a demon. So she would have to overwhelm him with just one blow and using her star rain artifact. She wanted to attack him. But the demon was moving very fast and was already behind Magiki. Turning around, the girl thought that he was very fast and the demon tried to attack her. And Magica dodged and thought that the demon did not give the opportunity to use the artifact and the next moment our hero saw only the crashing pavement and thought about Magica. The young man could not understand why he could only watch. Because these eight years were really wasted, our hero thought, he was not reborn in order to repeat the collapse of his previous life. The next moment, his desire caused Mana in his hands and looking at Mana, the young man thought that perhaps he could use magic without leaving his place. If he succeeds, looking towards Magiki, our hero thought. The demon tried to attack Magica and she understood that because of the wind it became even more difficult. One direct blow and she would die. The girl understood, after each attack, because the demon was recovering and she had to catch the moment and use the artifact. The next moment attacking the demon again, he threw Magica away, to which she thought that it was just unrealistic. As long as he was accumulating mana, he wouldn't be able to attack anyway. The next moment, the demon was spinning a huge fireball over his head in Magica. Looking at him, it turned out that so she understood that she was going to die, closing her eyes. She was waiting for her death. At this moment our hero used his manipulation skill and then, Magica, opening her eyes, saw that the fire attack of the demon was carried away somewhere into the distance. Looking at the attack really, Alto did not believe. Could he really change the trajectory of the blow? Magica thought. At that moment the demon, looking in front of him, lost his balance and then looking at our hero. Magica realized that it was a young man and then the demon, falling right on Magica and this was her chance to attack him the young man shouted to the girl. Using the star rain, she attacked the demon and was able to wound him so that he disappeared. Looking at this, both heroes thought that they had succeeded. Then Magica, running up to Alta, asked if he was okay and helping him up. The young man said that he had just the weaknesses due to an increase in the level and that he will rest a little and he will feel better. Putting the guy on his back, the young man did not understand what Magica was doing. She said that she would take him to the hotel and our hero asked her not to do this. But the girl said that the young man had bypassed her again and asked to be allowed to do at least that. The next moment, when they were running away, the girl said that for the first time she saw the technique that he used and realizing that Magica was talking about manipulation. The young man said that he had acquired a new skill during the time they had not seen each other. Again, using manipulation on his scarf, this scarf immediately appeared on Magica and then, seeing this, the girl asked if the young man was doing this, to which he replied that with the help of mana he could move objects at will, so he could change the direction of the wind attack and block the offensive, forcing him to move in the other side, and if you train, you can control your opponents like puppets. Magica, listening to our hero, said that it was an incredible skill, to which our hero explained that he himself could not move and would never defeat a demon alone and said that it was Magica who saved this city. The Addressing her, to which the girl, blushing, said that she thought that they both tried, our hero laughed in response. The next moment, he remembered who had defeated the demon last time, wondering to himself, and that if he had continued in the same spirit, 
then there would have been no trace of the city. The next moment, our hero thought to himself that he did not remember hearing about something like this, so someone had to defeat him. Who could be strong enough to defeat the demon, the young man thought. At that moment he felt this aura and asked the girl to stop when they, they ran across the roof. Magica, turning her attention to our hero, said that they had not reached yet, but the young man asked them to stop now, then suddenly Magica stopped. Stopping in the middle of the roof, the young man looked down and thought that he had no time to forget this figure, these black clothes, oppressive mana. As if this man was not from this world. This man was a magician who killed Hannah in a previous life. This man who stood right in front of our hero Gamogen, stood and looked away. Looking at Alto, Magica thought that this was the first time she had seen him like this, and asked who it was at all. To which the young man replied that it was Gamogen Salsway one of the twelve commanders of Euphonia. Hearing this Magica thought that even she had heard, because Tone was the most powerful magician in the world. At this moment, while she was reasoning, Alto began to collect her magic and then Magica asked what Alto was doing. Our hero in a fit of anger said that it did not concern the girl, because he had to kill this magician and then Magica stopped the hero and asked if the young man was going to fight in such a state. The young man was already looking at Magica who was grabbing his hand and she said that the young man was too weak after leveling up and would not be able to resist this magician. Our hero only asked her to let go and at that moment Magica asked Alto to calm down and say, doesn't he understand? Because now he couldn't win shouting at the guy and trying to reason with him, to which the young man calmed down and thought that the girl was right, in such a state he could not defeat the magician. Leaning on the roof of the house, our hero was depressed. At that moment, the same magician stood and looked at his invention and then the guy next to him asked what it meant that the demon was summoned by the magician and whether it was him, Mr. Gamogen, but that he replied that it was him and that he got into his hands it was a rare object to summon and he wanted to try it out, but it was useless. The thing could only summon a low-ranking ogre, breaking the thing in his hands, he said. Unfortunately, before Gamogen could intervene, someone had already defeated him without difficulty. Then the young man behind the magician said that the power of even such a weak demon was enough to destroy a small state. The twelve commanders of Euphonia obey only royal orders their duty is to protect the country, such a thing is simply unacceptable. At this moment the magician looked at the guy and lifting him up, bound his neck with magic, turning to the young man, whom he held at the top. The magician asked about the desire to use things that fell into someone's hands, of course, whether he thought and that it was in his best interests to keep his opinion to himself, to which the guy gasped, saying that he was very sorry the next moment the young man was falling straight into the ground. The magician ordered that a carriage be served to him, because he would return to the capital and continue his research. At this moment another young man addressed Mr. Gamogen and said that he still did not find the one he was looking for. Did he really want to leave everything as it is? To which the magician said that that person was not it was in the city, getting into a carriage and saying that. However, when he saw our heroes, the magician thought that Machio would carry out terror. He did not expect to find one of the enemies of the Vatican in such a place. At that moment, our heroes saw the look of this man and were dumbfounded with horror, to which the magician thought that it must be Machia who defeated the demon and that she was strong, and you must have wonderful ingredients from her body parts. Camogen thought that he could take care of the girl right now and here he thought, but then stopped, because there were no orders for her destruction yet, if he went against the king, then he would stop supporting his experiments and the risk was too great, the magician thought, so he told his coachman to go, because they will meet the girl again. The magician's carriage was leaving. And our heroes just looked after them and realized that the magician's gaze scared them so much. Magica said that she thought that he would definitely kill them now, sitting thinking that here's the commander of Euphonia. She said and looking at Alto asked how our hero was. The young man looked at the floor and thought that how stupid he was and thought that he could now fight this magician because he was a real monster. So straining the guy thought that when they met again, he would be stronger than him Gajan. Looking at the sky our hero thought. A few days later, the Lord of Kinetogris expressed a desire to publicly thank Magica for exercising the demon. Magica refused, asking if they had forgotten about Alto, to which the top did not want to admit that someone with such a standard of living as a young man could have such power. After that, the Lord seemed to give up. Did our hero really ask Magica? She definitely did not want recognition, whether she would be sure of this and while they were walking around the city, they reasoned. Magica said that she was sure the guys were completely uncooperative and thought why none of them wanted to recognize the power of Alto. Turning to Alto she asked. Alto said that there was nothing to be done, because in their world everything is decided by the standard of living. He thought to himself that among all those he met, only Hannah and Magica ignored this rule, smiling and looking at the girl, our hero thought. And turning to Magica, he said that rather than worry about it, it was better for her to devote herself to training. And Magica said that when Alto spoke like that, Magica began to wonder if everything was okay with the guy. Our hero said that he was thinking of dropping into the dungeon again tomorrow.
At that moment, they passed by a man who was watching them closely and stopping. The young man turned to him, to which Magica asked what attracted the hero's attention, and then he said that just the face seemed familiar to him and looking at the person in front of him he I saw the same man who worked in the guild. The man was sitting on the asphalt. It was Lion. And on his sign it was written that he needed warmth and affection. At that moment he saw our hero. And when he saw an employee of the guild, he was surprised and remembered what was connected with Lion. When he saw our hero, Lion shouted that it was him, did the young man not remember him, to which our hero showed all his dislike for the young man and said that he had seen him for the first time. Lion, of course, did not believe our hero, because his face could not be forgotten and said that in truth he was in a difficult situation and that now he would not have been prevented by their support in the form of money. Our heroes only passed by and our hero, turning further to Magica, asked on which floor of the dungeon the girl was training, pretending that they ignored the guy. The next moment, Lion threw himself at the feet of our hero and asked to borrow money, to which our hero, trying to disconnect the guy from himself, asked what he was warming his ears for and also asked him to borrow money, and that he had no shame at all, to which Lion, addressing the guys, said that he thought that they had potential, they just kept silent and looked at the guy. The next moment, Lion, addressing the guys and pointing at himself, suggested that they all create a group of adventurers together, 